Hi everyone. So today's lecture is on domestic installations. Now, why do we need to study about them? Because they are important part of integration of essential services systems in the residential facilities. So uh, we are not going to learn about all the domestic installations, but we we'll learn about the ones which carry heavy load, which requires heavy load while designing your residential buildings. It is important to put them in system for ensuring comfort, for ensuring safety and hygiene. Uh, we are going to study about water heating systems, then radiators and HVACs. So all these three things, they actually carry very heavy load inside your building. And by heavy load, we mean they need more of voltage and uh, the maximum amount of voltage that is taken up by something in our house are these three domestic installations. And the electricity bill hugely depends on these three systems. If we use more of AC, the bill will be more right as compared to other installations in your building so let's start with the very first one which is your water heating system now in our water heating systems we have two to three types of systems the very first one is your storage water heater and the other one is tankless water heater let's study these two types together so because uh, discussing them to together will help you distinguish between both the systems. So second type is a tankless water heater. Now what happens in storage water heater? Uh, this is a geyser. You store water inside the geyser and then you switch on your switch and in around uh, one uh, 30 minutes to one hour your water will heat up completely and then you can use it from your taps wherever it's connected maybe in your bath maybe in your kitchen or maybe near the wash basins so what happens here is uh the water is stored in an insulated tank so in this type of geyser your tank will be insulated and when the water heats up your water will keep uh, keep its temperature i mean it will stay warm or hot for longer period as compared to your tankless water heater it provides water it provides hot water even when the switch is off even when the power is off why because we are storing this hot water in an in an insulated tank that is the reason we call it storage water heater on the other hand your tankless heater it heats water directly as it comes uh, usually these types of geysers are small in size and you use it in your kitchen and they are generally instant water heaters. So what happens here is plumbing supply is directly connected to this geyser and it will have certain amount of water. Once you switch on the power, the water will be heated up and you can use it directly within 10 to 15 seconds or 15 seconds of switching on your switch now since the size of this tank is small water flows directly through the heating element and as soon as you switch on your switch the water gets heated it will take less of time which means it will take less energy as compared to your storage water so in all this will take less energy as compared to your storage tank but the benefit of this tank is you can use the water even after the power is off for one hour or two hour you'll always get warm water and here you get hot water for less time but this is energy efficient because this is taking up less of energy it was and since it is smaller in size it takes less space in your home so the next type of water tank is solar water heater now this is same as that of your storage tank but then except of using the electricity we are using solar panels for heating up the water and it will ultimately depend on sunlight so the negative part of it is if you have sunlight only then you can warm up the water otherwise you will have to take the electricity from the general grid but the positive part is it you are using renewable source 
so as to warm up your water and you are using less of electricity saving upon fuels and also it has low maintenance cost but the initial investment is more the con is the initial investment is more and you need backup on cloudy days but the best part is it's renewable and even the lifespan of solar panel is more you will get less of electricity bill so obviously cost cutting will be there and it since it's independent installation you always have command over the electricity that you want to use in your house so overall it will save up energy and it will save up your money so this is the best kind of heater that you can use at your house and about these two tanks if you have a place where you don't want much of water just the uses usage is less then you can use the tankless water heater and if you want it to use for more household activities like bathing or washing clothes you need water for big tasks you can always have storage water heater so it will depend on the purpose now next type of domestic installation is our radiator now radiators are basically thin flat plates metal plates or panels which is helping to radiate the heat in the room what do you mean by radiating radiating means it is spreading out evenly uh, let me give you an example um like we have water and if i throw a stone inside a water it give you these waves right circle 1 circle 2 so the waves are radiating in a uniform radial pattern and one example is of wood fire if i'm burning up campfire you'll see that the heat radiates evenly in a good radial pattern so you have inner circle which is hotter then you have the outer circle which is a little warmer so by radiation we mean we have a certain radii uh, an area in which the heat or a uh, heat since heat is a wave that is why i'm giving you example of water because in water also when you are throwing a stone a wave will be formed so heat is also a wave so they both form the same pattern So the same thing goes for your radiator when you have these panels installed what will happen uh, they will warm up themselves after they are properly heat up they will start radiating heat evenly throughout your room so uh, the best part is they are very modern looking and they have a very minimal they look very nice installed in your houses and the heat spread is very uniform since it is in a radial wave pattern but the negative or the con about this is it's a bit expensive and some people can say they are less decorative because they have a very simple basic shape and they sometime can look a little bit bland now second type of radiator is your column radiator so it is nothing but the same radiate it has a shape in rectangle but a column radiator is somewhat elongated it has the same type of panel but they are bit longer than your normal radiators these radiators were used earlier in older ages in older times you can see them in heritage homes it has good heat retention and it takes up less of space because since you are installing them vertically it will take of it will take more of vertical area in your house and yeah it it will always depend on the type of design that you are building so if you think your space fits better in a rectangular horizontal shape then you can use a regular radiator otherwise if you think you have a certain column or certain space which is dumped or not being used that can be easily used as a column radiator but it can some time look bulky the heat up slowly as compared to these because we have uh, because what happens in a rectangular radiator you have more number of panels and less surface area to cover so this means you'll have more heat as compared to this because you'll have less number of panels here which are elongated and it will not cover much of area the more the number of panels the more heat they will emit or radiate so that's why 
column radiators are used very less nowadays but again your if your design is supporting it then you can obviously use it now the third type of radiator is your convector radiator we also call it a blower which is used to give your uh, warm air in winters so uh, since it's mo it is movable it is kind of a rectangular box with the with the handle and one stand and you have hot air coming from it it has a rod installed inside it which heats up and then a fan is installed behind it uh, so when this air goes through the hot plate you get warmer air so the benefit of it is it is mobile you can carry it anywhere it's not permanently installed you can take it anywhere in any room that you want plus it heats fast if we talk about these two radiators you have to switch them on and it will take around 20 to 30 minutes so as to warm up your whole room but if you want uh, instant heat for yourself to get warm up the convector is the best option and since it uh, includes a fan to circulate the warm air you will get fast heating and it is a compact design and it is mobile these are all the pros uh, the only con that you can have in this is it is slightly noisy and you <laughs> since it the body is of metal and the fan will always be working so you'll get a little bit of noise while using this convector and it might not look that stylish as that of your uh, column radiator and a simple radiator otherwise on a general note this can be very useful it is it is also a bit uh, affordable as compared to the other convectors so yeah these are the basic installations and hvac is the last one which we'll discuss in detail we have a separate unit for it because it is a very detailed topic to discuss about hvac's full form is heat and heat ventilation and air conditioning we will take up this topic in the next unit so yeah these are the basic radiators that you must know about as the major domestic installations in your houses since they are going to take up much of voltage inside your house. So thank you in the next unit we will be discussing about the components of electric electricity like wires, cables, sockets and switches in detail how many types of uh, switches are there how many types of meters are there and how different kind of uh, element work in different places because res residential places will have uh, different type of fixtures and uh, commercial and industrial places will have different kinds of fixtures so thank you see you in the 